Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! I am Zookeeper Siri and we are here at a very special new exhibit that we are going to be working in today. Working, some of you say, but Siri, it's Thanksgiving! And yes, it is Thanksgiving, but there is always so much to do in the zoo. And as zookeepers, we cannot take a day off because we need to take care of all of our animals in our zoo. And what better way to celebrate Thanksgiving than building the turkey exhibit! Huzzah! So that is where we are right now. I have been working on setting up the basics and we are going to dive in and do all of the little details and make our little wild turkeys hopefully very happy in their home today. So these lucky lucky gobble gobbles are not going to end up on a dinner plate but they're going to end up in our awesome exhibit. And really quickly I would like to say happy Thanksgiving to all of the U.S. members of our community out there and I hope that between all of the awesome food you guys will be able to think of something you're really grateful for. That's actually what we do in our family is we think about what we are grateful for on Thanksgiving more so than the food. Yeah, there's yummy food, but then, you know, we'll all talk about things that we're really grateful for for the year. We'll try to cultivate that culture of gratitude in our lives, and I hope you guys can be able to do that today. And if you want, you can leave a little comment about what you're grateful for, because that's just so awesome. And when you see other people happy, then, like, sometimes you get happy, and so when you, like, share your happiness, you can just in infect other people with it, like some sort of a little happiness microbe, and spread happiness everywhere like a little virus, guys. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I'm going to be grateful for the rain because I guess sometimes we need the rain too. But all right, Sunflower. Oh my goodness, she's like molting so much. Let's go ahead and I will show you guys where we are. So you probably recognize some of the area because that is the back end of the for the autumn aviary. I almost said the woodpecker forest. It is kind of a woodpecker forest. It's got lots of woodpeckers. It has the tiny finches in there. It has some delicious looking chestnuts that I wish I could reach. But we are behind the autumn aviary and we are kind of out in the open because turkeys tend to like, from what I have read about them, wild turkeys prefer forested areas that have open little glades and like fields in the center. So I'm trying to set that up for our turkeys. And today we're going to go in. We'll probably remove like all of those little blue flowers. We'll take out some of the grass. And I chose this area because of a few things. One, it's a nice big area. Oh, hang on, Sunflower. I'll be right back. I'll show you guys where it is located. It is actually behind the little autumn aviary down this little path will take us dun 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 to the deer exhibit so here are our white tail deer just living it up happy in their exhibit as always there's several of them in here let's see if we can find some more there we go there's a little fawn hanging out over there there's some more of the white tail deer one of the bucks and one of the females so yeah oh, and there's the mama of the fawn behind the tree there so yeah, here's our white-tailed deer exhibit. You can see several of our little American goldfinches are hanging out over there. There's where we, oh my goodness. Oh gracious, I'm gonna be grateful for the rain. I'm gonna be grateful for the rain. Over there is where we are going to be putting the wolf exhibit. And then down here, if we come this way, is where we have the little lookout post. Probably not the safest place to go. And voila, up there to the left, pancake syrup shack, and then more of the exhibits over there. Oh my gosh, normally I would want to be indoors for this, but we're just gonna have to ride this out, I think. There's other people doing some work today. So, oh my gosh. Oh dear. Really? This is how it's gonna be? But Spider, it's Thanksgiving! <laughs> Oh, well, I suppose that's how it's going to be. But I thought this area, uh, let's go ahead and put my armor on just in case. I thought this area would be a good spot because then you're a short walk from the turkeys. If you are over at the gray wolf, um, we're going to make this like, well, I guess wolf just in general, wolf lodge, which is going to be a really beautiful bed and breakfast kind of cabin mountain -y thing we're going to build over there. It's a nice little walk next to the syrup shack. We might even make a little extra path so you can just come down by the side to come get some delicious pancakes and syrup covered waffles. I'm kind of tempted to grab one right now, but we still have pumpkin muffins to eat, so I won't worry about it just yet. But yeah, see, so there's like a little teeny path you can take up there. And we'll put a bunch of really nice trees. We'll plant a whole bunch of trees. We'll do maybe some little exhibits. And then we'll come on down. And you can see our gobble gobble turkeys right back here. So I thought this was a good spot. Not only because of like the physical location, but when I was surveying the area, there's a ton of leaf litter. There's just so much leaf litter. Oh my goodness, there's a handsome little male chocobo kicking around over there. But there's leaf litter and there's mushrooms and leaf litter is what we really want to gather up in abundance along with these like nice little bushes. And we want to fill up our turkey exhibit with all of the leaf litter, more so than the grass. Because in all of the pictures I see of wild turkeys, they're always digging around in, like, the dead leaves. Looking for bugs, looking for seeds! Woo! 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 Roots! 
Jason! Why? No, I just chucked bone meal at his head. That wasn't going to do anything. Well, this is an unexpected sort of day. This is one of those days you have to kind of grit. Okay. Grit your teeth and be grateful, Sunflower. And acknowledge that a zookeeper's day is never done. We need to take care of our animals. Um, oh, I got a potato from that zombie. See, he was just bringing me something for my Thanksgiving day feast. Don't you guys worry. Oh my goodness, Sunflower. Let's get you, let's get you out of the open a little bit, maybe. I'm gonna, here, why don't you come over here? Under this tree. I hope that's a good choice. Um, okay, well, let's go ahead and, yeah, I'll show off the turkey exhibit to you just a little bit. So this is gonna be our American Eastern turkey. And we only have males, but that's just gonna have to do for now. Usually, they travel in, like, flock groups, and you'll often end up with the females and their young, meeting up with other females and their young, kind of like the way the deer do. And they can be in flocks of, like, up to 200 sometimes. So they can really start traveling in big groups. So we'll put the turkeys in here. I went through and I added some, oh my gosh, it's raining so hard. I added tons of leaves to the backdrop so that it kind of breaks that up, makes it look a little bit nicer than just staring at a bunch of dirt. So that is put there. I, I accidentally grew this gigantic oak tree right here and I was like, it's perfect. I want to keep it forever. So we have this giant oak here and I put in a pecan tree, a special little pecan tree because turkeys also eat nuts. And I was like, well, pecans are native or pecan depending on where you live but they're called pecans where I live okay lightning lots and lots of lightning but pecans or pecans are native to a lot of where the eastern turkeys tend to live so I'm like hey I bet they eat a lot of pecans the pecans will fall into the ground the turkeys will be like gobble 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 and eat them oh and because it's raining there is a myth and I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably heard it if you're in the US that turkeys are so dumb that they will go out in a rainstorm and stare at the sky with their mouth wide open while it rains and they'll drown because the water will fill up their little mouth and they'll drown because they're staring at the rain. That is totally a myth. It's not true. However, domesticated turkeys, and this may be because they're domesticated, when alarmed are known to gather up in big giant groups, Mr. Zombie. Are you bringing me something for Thanksgiving day dinner too? Is that how this is working? Nope. <laughs> oh my goodness. But they, uh, oh, he gave me a little zombie head. Actually, every, all the zombies are bringing me presents. Okay, then. Uh, but the domesticated turkeys are known to kind of freak out Mr. Creeper. What on earth is going on today? I'm just trying to do a little bit of work, and this is just so rude. This is my turkey exhibit, Mr. Creeper. You are not, no. That's right. Shoo. All right. Um, where was I, Sunflower? <laughs> Domesticated turkeys are known to gather in big groups and smother each other when panicked. But I, I think that's because of two things. Domesticated fowl are bred for their meat, not for their brains. So birds that would normally die as a natural result of like natural selection end up being bred because they have like lots of uh, chest meat and, or leg meat that people want to eat. So the smart ones are not the ones who tend to be bred. It's selective breeding by people. And so you do end up with what you could argue is less intelligent birds as time goes on and you domesticate more species, just like there's more aggressive chickens um, because of how we've bred domestic chickens. And normally they wouldn't be that aggressive in, in nature. Uh, but sunflower, since we're speaking of birds, um, the other thing is like domesticated turkeys probably would be like in a pen. And so if they all freak out, they'd be like, I can't go anywhere. A little corner. Um, thank you, Alex. Uh, I'm a bit far from a bit. Thank you, Alex. All right, let's try it. Let's just go ahead. I'll go try. All right, we'll try this because this is this is just being kind of chaotic. All right, but yeah, domesticated turkeys would be in a pen, so I imagine if they freak out, they can't just be like, "Dude, get off me!" Oh, lightning! And okay, that was another explosion. Okay, we're just gonna come in here. I'm gonna put some flower in her little safari net. There we go, and we're gonna come in here and. Okay, let's see if we can get rid of this rain. There we are. Hopefully that works. I don't know if that'll work. Ba boom, ba boom. Oh, yeah, it worked. <laughs> Yay! Much better. Much, much better. Yay! Thank you. 
All right, so both of us were being a little bit distracted by that rain, so this is much nicer. Geez, Sunflower, we didn't need like that chaotic storm going on while we're trying to put our turkeys in. I didn't want to let the turkeys out until like the storm was over because of the lightning. All right, there we go. And let's fly over. Oh, I need to get you a little guy shell green, don't I, darling? Well, we'll grab you one in just a moment. But yeah, so I think domesticated turkeys might smother each other because, you know, they're, they're not just in the wild where they can be like, hey, get off me, you jerk, and like push the other turkeys off. So let's go ahead and get to work now that the storm has calmed down and I'm not distracted by monsters popping out every two seconds. I'm grateful that Alex was able to help us sleep and now we can let our turkeys out. I figure we can let them run around while we're collecting stuff for them. But this is their enclosure. They've got some nice trees for shade. They've got this little open area. We'll probably replace most of the grass with ground cover. They've got this beautiful oak tree to provide extra shade. I tried to make sure to go around and put up the birch fencing. There's a couple little spots for zookeeper entrances. Um, hello guys. I hope you're gonna enjoy your enclosure. It's kind of a nice one and I'm about to make it a lot nicer. Look at all our gobblers. So welcome. You guys are, are, are five turkeys who are not going to be Thanksgiving Day dinner. You're going to be here instead. And apparently a long time ago, well, I say a long time ago. It's probably much more recent than I think. Turkeys were almost hunted in the wild to extinction in the U.S. because they are such good meat. And so people were like, hey, I really love turkey. And they were overhunted to the point of almost being eradicated until people would gather up the wild stock and breed them up and then release them back to the wild. So the turkey is kind of a bit of a success story in that regards in that it was almost completely eliminated from nature, like from the wild. And then they were brought back. They were brought back by people who bred them up so that we can continue to eat them. So it's kind of a kind of a bit of a sideways story, Sunflower, but I'm sure they're grateful on some level. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we are going to give our turkeys some of this wonderful leaf litter. I just saw all of this over here. Oh, and there's my mushrooms. I saw all of this over here and I got so excited. And there's a little buddy. Oh, and there's, what's this? Ooh, there's some horses. We're gonna have to go on that horse rescue mission pretty soon and just like go like diving down all of the little holes and, and canyons where the horses have shown up. Look at that cute little bun bun. Oh, that's a cute bun bun. Pigu, be careful. This is a little bit dangerous over here. Ooh, there's so much leaf litter over here. There were a couple ants, but I relocated them so that they wouldn't get mad as I was knocking down trees. Oh, and that reminds me, trees! So another thing I really want to add for our turkeys may be some of the maple saplings. So what do you guys think? I think they would enjoy a maple sapling. In fact, that might put down the ground cover that we're looking for in abundance. Not to mention a lot of people when they think about turkeys, they think about autumn time because they are thinking about Thanksgiving. So I think that would be kind of nice. And maybe it would bring out some of the red or the yellows of their coloring. So we might go grab a maple sapling in just a second. And I think a yellow maple sapling and maybe put it like right there and let it grow and or we'll take down that tree let it grow and then we'll build around it that sounds like a great idea and another tree i was thinking about putting around over here is actually the fir tree so we could have pine cones because there are the adorable pine cones that you can actually get when you grow fir trees. And I know Anasia has fir trees in her area. I don't know if we have fir trees. So let's go ahead. We're gonna fly up to the house really quick. That's why Sunflower is with us. Come, my love. I love how much we work we've done on the temperate forest area. And we will be working on the marine area. We'll start work on dinosaurs a little bit, uh, probably as season three begins. And don't panic, as some of you guys have been like, what, season two is almost over? We're staying in this world for years, you guys, literal years. So don't worry. Aki, I also need to find someone to trade these beans to. All right, so let's see if we have, oh, I hear my babies on the other side. Hello, children. Has Aki not smushed you? Oh, good. They're fine. Yeah, Aki hasn't managed to get in there to smush those guys. All right. So I think... There we go. So here is the yellow maple sapling. We'll go ahead and grab one of those. And then the other tree saplings. Do I have a fir tree? There's a spruce. So I don't have a fir tree sapling, it looks like. But what we'll do is at some point we will go and we'll visit Anasia and we will see if we can get one of her fir trees. There's a dead leaf in here, that's interesting. Birch sapling, should I put in some birch trees to their area? Uh, I, think the, I think the autumn tree will be enough. But yeah, fir trees for pine cones, I think would look really nice in our temperate forest area. So we will go ahead, oh, he's leaving tea leaves everywhere, that's fine, that's fine, I won't panic. 
So we'll go ahead and maybe visit Anasia sometime in the near future and ask her if we could collect some pine cones for our turkeys. And the other thing I was thinking about doing kind of to complement this area, if we add fir trees and more autumn trees, is maybe turn like a little zone into an informational area that might have, um, say, some Native American of some tribe. I'll have to pick like a couple tribes because there's lots of them. Uh, but maybe some like reconstruction of a building or maybe what I really want to do is, and I'll probably do this instead, is a garden that would spotlight plants, like pl native plants that are crops like corn, maize, corn, um, pumpkins, other native crops that are native to America or the Americas. And again, because those are things you think about. I think about corn when I think about turkeys, even though the gobble gobble and a lot of the courtship behavior that you see from turkeys that is more common to see in the spring because that is when they are busy trying to find their mates not in the autumn in the autumn they're just trying to eat so they can get nice and fat before winter because they need to survive the winter all right you guys hello my little gobblers you guys are so cute all right let's put down their tree i think we will cut down this tree and put it here so glorious grafter i need your help watch out guys don't get too close Yay, Glorious Crafter, yay! All right, let's try, uh, watch out, little buddy. I'm trying to plant a tree here for you. <gasps> oh, look at that, oh, it's so cute. It's so small and so cute, I love it. I love it, I love how it put the little like leaf litter down too. That was a good move. All right, so we can put these dried leaf piles down. We didn't get too many bushes. I'll have to go get some more bushes. So, and I think removing these little like blue flowers is a good deal because the hydrangeas just don't match a lot of things. All right, we'll climb up here. We're building an exhibit. We're building a turkey exhibit to celebrate turkeys and not eating them. All right, so we'll do that. Hi guys, oh, they look so good from down here. All right, and then we can come in and I just feel like if we start sprinkling the area with, yeah, look at this, with this kind of litter, the leaf litter, and then maybe some of the mushrooms. Oh, I have lots of toadstools, sweet. I have so many toadstools, look at this. So hopefully this will this will be good for our turkeys. Are you guys liking this? I think they're liking this. I think this is, this is good, good turkey home ideas. All right, maybe some more toadstools, just kind of sprinkled around here. Maybe we'll, oops, I actually covered up one of the green leaf litters. You gotta be careful with them. Maybe come through here. I wonder if I should have grabbed that birch sapling after all. I thought about it. I thought about it. All right, then we can like smush those down a little bit. All right, we might need to get a little bit more leaf litter. I know it's been a while since we've done some proper exhibit building. So I'm hoping this will be exciting for those of you who are like, yay, exhibits. All right, and we'll be doing more exotic exhibits than the temperate forest things in the future too, don't worry. All right, so those are all those pieces. I have a mushroom I picked up somehow. Can I put you under the tree? Nope, all right, well, you're gonna be dinner now. All right, not you turkeys, the, the mushroom. I love mushrooms. All right, so let's see. Hmm, gobble gobbles, I feel like you guys need maybe another tree? I really feel like they might need another tree. So maybe we could just try to put another oak tree in there. Let's put another oak tree in, maybe right over there. And then we'll continue to add in these bushes. Then I'll go collect up a bunch of those bushes. And we'll have a happy little turkey house. Happy little turkey home. I wish we had some females for them, but not quite. There we go. Eh, eh. You're not, you're not, you're not big enough. You need to be like, I want like a really big awesome oak sapling. I want like a big giant tree. Well, you know what? That one's kind of bigger. That one, that one will have to do. It'll have to do. Oh, maybe what I want is to like add some nests or things in here. Hmm. I'm not sure. What I really want are more of those little, oh, I'm good. My shears are about to die. Do I have a backup pair? <gasps> Siri, what are you doing not carrying a backup pair of shears? Oh, well, I'll have to get backpack. Hopefully that'll work. Um, let's see more of those bushes. Ah, oh my gosh. <laughs> this is where they were all hiding. Okay. But yeah, so I'm thinking about maybe having a little informational garden area over here. Did that do it? Nope, bat pig just destroys them. Dang it. Well, I'm going to have to wait till I get another pair of shears to continue on that part of the project. But yeah, just a little informational area so you know like what kind of crops are native to America, like to the Americas. Maize is not quite native to North America. It's native to more Central America which is very fascinating. I did a lot of research on maize, believe it or not, which is another early name for corn. 
uh, when I was when I was in university. All right, so what do we think now? This is, yeah, the tree really helps things. This looks good. I mean, they're not complicated animals. They don't need a ton. They just need like some highlights here and there. I like it. I like it. I kind of wonder if one more, one more sapling would, and then one more sapling would probably be too much. I think this is good. I think this is really fantastic for our little turkeys, and I think they should be pretty happy. Um, maybe a little bit more leaf litter. I mean, really, like, it's kind of optional just to add a teeny bit more leaf litter. They really look happy. I mean, they don't need much. So if you guys have more ideas for what we could add for our turkeys, then please let me know. The wild turkey is a pretty simple game fowl. Um, really, like, I, we've talked quite a bit about them already. The males will kind of compete between each other to impress the females with their fantastic displays. They tend to sleep in trees at night. That's what you guys do. You roost in trees at night if you can. When chased by a predator or startled, the males tend to run. The females will tend to fly because they're not weighed down by all of those heavy feathers. The females raise their chicks on their own. The males provide zero parental support whatsoever. They're just around to try to impress the ladies and leave their little trail of babies behind them. Um, and they like to eat, like things that you find in the leaf litter. Oh, and speaking of leaf litter, you guys, did you know how dangerous it is for the little animals if you like clean up all the leaves out of your yard? It makes me so sad every year because like the salamanders and butterflies, we'll talk about that another day, but leaf litter is a very good thing. So if you have a corner of the yard, you can just, you don't really go in and you're fine with leaving like the leaves in the leaf litter alone for the year, you would be helping out so many different species, I promise you. Mm, these berries are good. But yeah, you'll be helping out a lot of species if you can just leave leaf litter untouched for the winter because that's where a lot of small species hibernate. That's where a lot of butterflies like curl up until they can come out during the spring. So it's really good to do. And I'm gonna grab these for sunflower. And you know what? I know it's a holiday for most people, sunflower, but I gotta say, I don't mind spending, here, I'm gonna give this to you, sunflower, there you go. I don't mind spending the day working hard in the zoo because this is so, Fantastic. This is this is what we want to do. So now we've learned a little bit more about turkeys and we'll go and we will spend some time out on our farm over the next couple days and the weekend just to just to be able to build up that farmer's market and celebrate the harvest before winter starts setting in. And we're gonna have to start getting ready because season two is going to end at the end of the year and we have to get ready for season three, which is gonna be so exciting, my little gobblers. And that means getting ready for like the zoo entrance to be built, celebrating the, the two whole years of zoo crafting and then once that is done really really actually building tons of exhibits sunflower i'm getting super excited but now that we have the turkey exhibit done i just need an educator and i need some signs and things over here and we need to figure out more little things like little gardens or trees or maybe a nice little spot to sit and rest or something where you can just smell the pine needles and yeah once we figure out some more things to kind of add in and connect between the exhibits I mean, look at how fantastic this area is becoming. We are really, really finally starting to get some sections of the zoo built. And I cannot wait to see what we're gonna get done in the coming months. This is just gonna be fantastic. Maybe we'll get the mushrooms out of the trees too. That might be a good idea. And I will see you guys bright and early in the morning. We're going to be gathering up the huge harvest that Aki has provided to us and trying to set up some more fields and maybe a teeny farmer's market over in the farm and getting a tier four horse later. So I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.